Thank you, Maria, for that very kind introduction. I'm going to talk today about a problem that starts with the fact that healthcare and public health use pooled shared resources. Resources are limited, in part because we want to use them for other things, roads, cars, potato chips. You can't have it all. So when it comes to health and health care, how do we share fairly? What is fair? Okay. This is a question that is politically, in case anybody's been following the Supreme Court lately, emotionally, morally, and intellectually difficult. Today, I'm going to talk about economics, which is a discipline founded on the notion that you can't have it all. But I'm also going to talk about justice, which is about how you share fairly, and about ethics, what are our moral responsibilities. Specifically, I'm going to talk about moral weaknesses, moral flaws, market weaknesses, market flaws, even market failures, this is not going to be a complete list today, of course, just a few select ones, and how a market might or might not work in healthcare. Now, the way a market normally works is that informed, prudent, imaginative consumers, that would be you, choose and purchase goods and services from competing providers, whether that's shoes or hardware, clothing, automobiles, food, this results in an efficient and fair distribution of resources because its resources are distributed the way people value them. They value them more, they spend more money on them for the most part. So market failure number one when it comes to health care in particular, services are provided without payment. Note, this is not a moral failure. But doctors, hospitals, emergency rooms, ambulances, take care of patients even when they can't pay, won't pay, won't be expected to pay. And they do that in, because this illustrates how important health is to us as human beings to pursue our life plans and opportunities. But this leads to moral failure number one, free riders. Diane Rehm hosted Health and Human Services Secretary Sibelius, and one of the callers complained about the Affordable Care Act's requirement to buy health insurance. She said, we're healthy, our family's healthy, we eat healthy, we don't go to the doctor with every little thing, why should we do this? The insurance company's getting rich off my fat. Of course, she also admitted, if it were a life and death situation, she would use the health system. Now, while Sibelius didn't call her a free rider, I will. <laughs> Jean Cranick learned this too. Jean Cranick in Tennessee didn't pay the $75 required by the city for fire protection services. So the firefighters came when his house caught on fire and they watched it burn down. Okay? So, lesson number one applied to healthcare. Either let free riders go untreated on the street or require some prospective financial contribution, insurance, taxes, private, public, whatever, to cover the costs that they're at risk for incurring and chances are will incur someday. So market failure number two, the myth of consumer sovereignty. In a market, informed, imaginative, prudent consumers choose goods and services based on their own values and preferences. When it comes to healthcare decisions, we generally don't expect people to do this without any advice at all. That's why we have doctors and stuff, okay? Uh, because finding out, you know, which, what should I do for my heart attack right now? Let me Google it. Isn't really gonna work, okay? When it comes to health insurance, it's an even bigger problem because it's not just what might I purchase today, but what might I need in the future if I got sick all the different possibilities, okay? And how would this plan work if I got sick? Would it get me what I wanted? I don't know, you, I got a master's in health policy and I can't always understand the insurance comparisons given to us by our large, generous employer. So, and <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> okay, and in public health, can you really imagine people choosing to buy, oh, I don't know, water inspection, vaccine development? 
Disease surveillance at the individual level, I mean. No, we pay for this as a public public thing, a public good. So one of the world's, pro well, at least the countries, if not the world's, most informed, imaginative consumers, and I suspect fairly well insured, Jane Brody. She writes for the New York Times and has written many books about health. She was having double knee replacement surgery, both knees, okay? And she wrote about this experience in her column. She's, I was fully prepared. My neighbor warned me about the pain, but the leading orthopedic surgeon I consulted said, oh, that's controllable now, no problem. She checked into her insurance coverage, and they would let her go to a rehab facility, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what happened? This operation hurts like hell. That's a quote. And they wanted to discharge, her insurance company wanted to discharge her from the hospital after three days when she was still using a bedpan. They let her have four days in the rehab facility, even though she was going home with knees that weren't working yet, to a four-story house. So the lesson from this is even a well-off, very well-educated consumer can't do the job that well. Relying on consumer choice alone for our health system won't work to achieve efficiency, much less fairness. Market failure number three, moral hazard. Basically, we buy insurance to protect ourselves from things that are, could be of high personal or financial cost in the future, protect against the risk. What that doesn't, with health insurance is that then when you go to use health services, you don't pay the full cost. Patients don't pay the full cost. Doctors aren't paying for it either. And so, you know, things that are desirable, like say, oh, I don't know, Viagra, tend to be overused. And things that are not as desirable, shots, vaccines, you can see the little kid down there, what? Um, colonoscopies, okay? Even if you make them free, people aren't going to buy them very often, <laughs> okay? So mor moral hazard means that, oops. Okay. So moral hazard illustrates that we need to distribute resources fairly. It's not gonna happen at the point of care, at the point of service. People will buy too much of some things and not enough of another. One of the moral failures of this, inability to pay, worse health. No question about this. One third of Americans skipped a doctor visit, didn't take a medicine, or skipped some other recommended care because of cost in the past year. One third. And that's more likely if you're an adult under 65, that is, you don't have Medicare, if you're a minority, if you're uninsured, of course, and ironically, if you're sick. Is that fair? Another moral failure on the flip side of that Failing to make the trade-offs we need. That is, you can't have it all, remember? We're using pooled, shared resources when we're paying for health care. Over a third of physicians would order an unnecessary MRI for back pain in response to patient request. And they do request them, okay? So the lesson from this is moral hazard keeps patients and doctors from considering costs. You can't avoid it without avoiding insurance. You need to distribute, however, limited pooled resources fairly. So how do we do that? Let's take a lesson from cookies. <laughs> Everybody likes cookies, right? But what if you have two kids and just one cookie? OK, well, you could try for perfect distributive justice and try to cut the cookie exactly in half. Of course, chances are one of the kids, if not both, are going to complain that they got the smaller half. <laughs> and you know what? Where's the nano scientist person? Chances are they'd be right. <laughs> one of them would be right anyway. OK? So you, turn, you could turn to procedural justice. That is, you could say, OK, child one, you cut the cookie. Child two, you get to choose first. That's procedural justice. So how might we apply procedural justice to healthcare or health insurance or limited resources in health? Well, let's play a game. Uh, no, not that one. <laughs> not that one. Not that one. Definitely not Twister. Well, maybe, but no, we'll do. Oh, yeah, the chat game. So the chat game 
also called a serious game or simulation exercise. It's based on principles of deliberative, okay, <laughs> democratic, de deliberative democracy, sorry they switched without my being aware, um, and uh, is a way of engaging people in what is a complex topic and also one, frankly, that most of us could care less about until we actually needed it, and that is what is health insurance going to cover, okay? So your Normally, the chat game takes one to two hours and has up to 15 people. We have about two minutes and, I don't know, what, a thousand, something like that? So um, I've already made some of the choices for you, but you can, <laughs> yes. So you can see that you've got, these are your resources. Oh, it's not working, is it? Okay. So your dots down there at the bottom um, right side, you have six dots, and these are your choices on how you can spend them. First you can cover more preventive services. Yeah, okay, so you can cover more preventive services, screening for things even when there's a fairly small chance that it would find disease. Alternatively, you could, that would cost one dot. Alternatively, you could spend your dots on lowering co-payments. So doctor visits would go from 50 to $30 and costs for ER and hospital would go down as well. Okay, you could, in the catastrophic category, um, allow coverage for things that have little evidence of benefit, but normal stuff didn't work, and so it's kind of the last hope left. You could cover adults for vision and dental services, not just kids, that would cost you two dots. And in the mental behavioral category, you've already got the severe mental illnesses covered, you could cover less severe things like depression, anxiety, and stuff, with counseling, short-term counseling, and medication, and sub substance abuse counseling. And for another dot, all the way up, you could also have inpatient treatment for uh, substance abuse if that's needed, and longer-term counseling when that is needed. So, what do you want? Somebody shout out something. Prevention. 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 Okay, does everybody agree? Yeah. Raise your hand if you agree. Everybody wants prevention, okay? Who disagrees? Oh, a few stalwart people there. Okay. <laughs> so click prevention. You did already. Good. Okay. What else you want to cover? Lower co -pays. Well, Okay. Okay. Well, stop, stop, stop. Lower co -pays? Who wants them? Yeah. Raise your hand. Who doesn't want them? Well, it's kind of split. Okay, somebody who wants them, stand up and tell me why. Okay. Because that way, when you can go to the doctor more often, um, I don't know, and have less out of pocket. Yeah, saving money. Well, it's hit every time you go, so like short term, you're more likely to go. Okay, who wants to argue against it? Near the aisle there, yes. Sorry. Yeah, I heard that. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay. One more argument for or against. Anybody want to? No? Okay. Now who wants lower copays? Raise your hand. Ooh, not so many. Who doesn't? Okay, forget that. We're staying with number one. What's the next one? Dental. Dental. Okay, somebody who who wants dental? Who doesn't want dental? All right, choose it. I know, I know there's a few of you out there, but you know, we only have so much time. Okay, what's next? Mental, one dot or two? Okay, stop. Who wants two? Somebody down here was yelling, yeah. The less severe. The, the one where you, that, that one right there. Right. Well, we already spent one. You could spend one more to cover like depression and short term yeah, counseling and stuff. I want to cover that because if you okay. can. Okay. You, you want longer term counseling and inpatient substance abuse or no? No. Yeah, if you can catch okay. It really, so he wants one. Who wants two? Sorry. Who wants two? Anybody? Stand up and tell us why. There's just a lot of people in this country who have problems and are afraid to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right, now, 
Who wants, let's see, the medium would be the, what our gentleman down here was talking about. Who wants that? Raise your hand. Who wants to go up another? No, nope, sorry. Okay. Um, now I want you just to, what do we have left? Out? Oh, the catastrophic. Just click on catastrophic for me, Leah. <laughs> we got to move on. And click on final phase or something because we have to move to the next thing. Okay, we're, now we're going to see how this works. All right? So, no, click the next one. <laughs> next one. Next one. It has to be one of the, this is random. Can you tell? Okay. Keep going. Oh, no! <laughs> yes, okay. So here's an illustration of the copayment issue, and that is uh, knee surgery landed James in the hospital for two days, office visits, tests, x-rays, all that kind of stuff. You chose the lower copayment, so as not to encourage overuse, I believe. At least that was the argument I heard. Um, and so his copayments will be $1,500. He makes $22,000 a year. What do you think about that? Would you stick with what you have? Who would stick with what they have? Not too many. Who wouldn't? Who wants to lower the copays? Oh, okay. All right, next one. Remember, though, you can't have it all. All right. <laughs> Will you click the next one? Oh, you did. Never mind. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, but do. Yeah, keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, prevention. We'll just, <laughs> this is, I think. Uh, so, Samantha's friend, Sue, Oh, that's my name. Recently felt a breast lump. She had a mammogram, led to surgery. Now she's now Samantha is worried because her friend had cancer and asked her doctor for a mammogram. So you chose the tier two level. You added that dot to the prevention category. And so uh, for someone like Samantha, mammogram finds a serious condition only one out of every 2,000 times, but her insurance will pay for it. So what do you think? Is that good? Who thinks we should leave prevention where it is? Raise your hand. Who would drop it back down? Hmm, pretty even. Okay. Uh-oh, I'm over time. <laughs> okay, next. Just go to finish. Thank you. Okay. So, chances are, obviously, there was some discussion and some disagreement here. If you want to try it yourself, you can go to the chat health.org and you can do a little demo there yourself. Normally, like I said, it's a smaller group of 15 and it's a little bit easier to have these conversations in a more thorough sort of way. So thank you.